This is my story. יש לי אנשים מהארץ שרוצים לצלם אותי ולצלם את המשרד ואת הבניינים שבניתי אז אני אהיה איתם כל הזמן. מרסל אדאמס, פורמלי מאיר אברמוביץ', is today 90 years old, father of four children. Julian, Sylvan, Linda, and Leora, and grandfather of 11 grandchildren. Marcel Adams. We all think we know the man. But meet Marcel Adams, the pioneer, building Palestine into Israel in the 1940s, introducing shopping centers into Quebec in the 1950s, and today, in the philanthropic world, cultivating the Israeli scientific superstars of tomorrow. It all began in the city of Piatra Niemce, Romania, where he was born on August 2, 1920, to Janko Abramovich and Shana Segal. Piatra, Piatra de Piatra, de the more you get, the more you transmit what it's all about. A handsome, happy, and promising youngster walking down the streets of Piatra Niams. Mayor Abramovich had no idea his entire world was about to be turned upside down. The Moldavian landscape he loved so much, the mountains and rivers, life as he knew it was about to change. When Mayer was born, he was the fourth of eight children. He had six sisters, one of whom died at birth, and a brother, David, who died when he was only one year old. My father was working day and night. I didn't see him enough. I, I was his chosen child of the six. He loved me immensely. We had a little stream, Kuyezd, and uh, it was right behind our property. It's there where I was going to meet other children and fool around. My three older sisters wanted to play with me, and I refused to play with them because they asked me to do embroidery and it didn't fit well. Embroidery for a boy. We played numbers, uh, meaning to guess or to anticipate certain results and qualify them to, through numbers. And that is, I believe, even today, I am obsessed by numbers and by dividing. A teacher coming home and teach us, the three girl, bigger, uh, older girls and myself, on one bench, and he was teaching us Hebrew. And uh, when the, any of my sisters was a little bit fresh or not acting to his demand, I got a clap. He says, I cannot beat the girls. If they love you, they should avoid displeasing me. Hey, hey, hey. 
Yanko Abramovich owned and ran a tannery that provided the family's main livelihood. Every Sabbath evening, the family would gather around the dinner table. Our conversation was not about Shakespeare or other subjects similar. What were we talking about? How you make an extra dollar by buying a truck? Am să încerc, poate că am să găsesc alte argumente. I will listen, I will take note, and maybe I will improve it, we'll talk about it next week. But it was always on the subject of how to improve our income. Marcel went to school in town where he was one of seven or eight Jewish kids in a class of 56. Although he was a good student, he received lower grades than he should have. Why? Jewish. <laughs> Every now and then, the Romanian kids would give their Jewish classmates a rough time. They would turn the lights off in the classroom and hit the Jewish kids over their heads. It happened that I was sharpening my pencil. How do you sharpen? We didn't have the facility of today. You take a blade and you cut off the hard part. As I had the blade and it came light, I took my two hands and kept the blade over my head. The guy who hit, hit the blade. Fewer happened after, fewer incidents. But what happened, happened. That's the story. Another more tragic anti-Semitic incident occurred soon after, just by the Bistritza River that flows through the city. We were all going to the Bistritza in the summer to be in the water. The temperature was very hot in July, August, but it happened so that this little boy of 11, the Goyim, the non-Jews, kept him with the head in the water and he didn't come out. That was the end of me going to the Bisitsa. My mother would not allow me to go to the river. It's risky. It was at that time that emissaries of Tnuota Nor Hatsuyuni, the young Zionists, arrived in town and approached the Jewish youngsters, who were eagerly looking for a group to belong to. We had Shlichim, emissaries who came and inflamed our heads. How we'll have a land, how we'll be happier away from Go Goyim. The purpose was identification with Jew Jewish people and starting a dream of maybe we'll go to the Holy Land. Instead, they were expelled from school. One day, one of the anti-Semitic teachers came and said, Kriegler, Aaron, and Abramovich, after the class, come to our principal uh, office and they managed to extract from us that we are going to uh, participate to some groups of Zionists. As a result, Marcel was not permitted to re-register for the next school year. Hey, 
The year was 1936, and Marcel had finished with school and had time to become more involved in the family business. It was soon evident that although he was but 16 years old, Marcel was a gifted businessman thanks to his flair for numbers. I was excellent in numbers. We were buying hides by the pound, by the kilo. And when I hide, I estimated that this hide of a bull is probably 40 kilo, big and heavy. And I was asking the butcher, how much do you want for your hide? If the price was, say, five lei, my father said, you go and finish the deal. The butcher said, how will you pay me? I said, what do you mean? I'll give him lei, money. I say, you don't have the money. I said, don't worry. I was hiding take out from my shoe <laughs> or, and come out with what I promised him. In 1939, Marcel enrolled in university. I entered university for three months when they came and they said in uh, the beginning of 1940, Jews out. Deciding to follow his dream, Marcel went off to the Hachshara in Bucharest to prepare for kibbutz life. He lived there with 40 other young men and women, divided into apartments according to their ideological affiliation. We were uh, sleeping on mattresses Bo in one room, there were four rooms, boys, girls, dining, and a small kitchen to prepare food. We were very happy. <laughs> Friday nights, we were singing together, all of us, for whatever merit it is. And if we were blessed to have a visitor to invite somebody with a good voice, it was our week's entertainment. Sapta taz tashir la nushir tashiri tashiri sabati beitev alotama yamim val marshe aya ve hagzimi kitzat sabati echomrim beivrit chizbati סבתא סיפרה איך בנגב שמרה כשהיה עוד שומם ויבש עם סטן ורימון מול צבעות ההמון היא אמרה נתגבר מלך וורבש פרי המולט מיניג יו טוק טו באץ' אברי נאו אנד דן דה גייז וואט הולד אה פרנדלי בוקסינג מאץ' דה לאסט פייט אוף דה איבנינג אבאוט אה דאוור גוינג טרו in general, the class, they say, let's now bring the Solido to see if he can also beat this win the winner from lifting heights of 40 kilo. I developed unbelievable muscles. They were all fragile with glasses, with <laughs> guilt type. A permanent, eternal student, not a fighter on the floor. Gil, I don't want to try you now. I am an old man. 
So that is the story with Solido. Nothing interesting, no, no big harm. While he was waiting for the boat and certificates to go to Palestine, Marcel's father tried to talk him out of the Zionist dream. At one point, my father knew that I am not changing my plans. I saw uh, some tears in his eyes. The outbreak of World War II brought all of Marcel's plans for the future to an abrupt halt. One day, the Romanians created forced labor battalions of youngsters. The year was 1943. Marcel was sent, along with the others, to help clean the debris of an earthquake-stricken town, Panchu, Romania. Forget about food. The food offered was spoiled. It was unedible. For two or three days, zero, and after that, I had to eat garbage. And you knew that others are being killed in Stalingrad. And that is the order. You do it, you conform or else. How do I feel? Horrible. What the choice? Prison. When a choice had to be made, he did not hesitate to stand up for his friend and leader, Itsu Artsy, the contact person for the Tnua. One day, Artsy was missing from one of the roll calls, and Marcel volunteered for punishment instead of him. The punishment could be, eventually, shooting the guy for desertion, imprisoning him, or who knows. I was young and stupid, And nobody answered till I made three steps forward and I say, I am prepared to replace Artsy, my name is Abramovich, and I remained in the unit and time sometimes takes care of such a situation, they, for <laughs> they forgot about me. I had a vest, one, two, three, four. It depends if I can establish that the guy who asked me for identity knows how to read or not. <laughs> Second, how alive is he, the person? to show him which paper is my identity. All that helped me remain solido and alive. I managed to go through the Shoah time without being personally deprived of my liberty. Marcel eventually succeeded in receiving a certificate and in 1944 he boarded the Maritza, a ship scheduled to set sail to Turkey, a first step on the way to freedom. I didn't believe we would arrive safely. We took a chance of our lives. But eventually, we were quite down, saying, look, I took my life in my hands, and who knows what will happen tomorrow. Continuing on their journey to Palestine, the refugees left Costanza port for Istanbul, Turkey. 
when we reached Istanbul, we burst singing and, and singing and yelling and explosion of joy. Crazy people who didn't know how enough to express I'm out, I'm safe. I want nothing, I want to be with you and to brag about how I escaped. But I escaped, look, look at me, I have escaped, it's me. After their arrival there, they were transported by train to Aleppo, Syria, where they were put on trucks that took them to Beirut, Lebanon. Finally, they were taken by the British to the Athlete Processing Center for Immigrants in Palestine. Abramovich Mayer, 24 years old. Were you 24 years old? Yeah, he was 49. Mayor, I was mayor. Yes, yeah. you he were was 24 years old. Ma'am Aleph, yeah. she found you, you. You, you found me. She Hush. found you. Yeah. And you belong to Kibbutz Anoar Atsioni? Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> I was here about six days and I had to pass health examination if I don't, if I'm not sick and also security if I'm not an infiltrator of the communists or of the Nazis. I had a dirty shirt on me for the last three weeks, probably an inch of dirt on it. From the moment I went on a boat on the Black Sea with what I had on me. It was terrific. When I came here, I say I am now out of the misery. I start now a new life. I'm a new man. The British put a bag of oranges have it, and we didn't know how to take more. We took five oranges, seven oranges, all over, and uh, they were laughing. And from here, I was sent with another group to a kibbutz. Which kibbutz? Uh, Ashdod Yaakov. Kibbutz life, however, did not agree with Marcel after all and he felt a need to move on in life. When I left kibbutz as, as Dot Yaakov, they gave me two shirts, a Atta, Atta suit, <laughs> and probably a pair of sandals. Marcel thought that he could establish a tanning business, a profession he was familiar with and one that he understood. I made an opportunity for myself. But I have a plan with a scope and advice from good people. So I was going to the market of Tulkarem, which is close to Pardeshana. I had brokers, Arabs, and I finished by having, after a few weeks, five, six, 
cows, bulls, animals. I say it's, it's a road, if I am doing it properly, I started with eight cattle, but I can grow to 20. And eventually I can see some hope at the end of the tunnel. Abavich Mayor, Katsab, Mithabed Baze, Lifnot, Livon Hen, Kabel, Oradat, Hamisim, Alabasar, Meashita, Kodemet. Hey for Mushinsky. Mushinsky, Lemata. If at a roet are a home, I lay to a health chama. I was always hungry. So I said to him, your eggs are C category. They are C size. Give me a proper egg. I put three eggs in charge. He said, okay. I will open, and he opened the wicket and yelled in with his hand Prepare an omelet of three eggs on butter. What is it? Aleda bluff. And that for that it was not your fault. You weren't here. <laughs> Just when things seemed to be improving for Marcel. Bad news arrived from the family back in Romania. I got a letter from my sister. My father is very ill. And she doesn't know how long he will live. But there is no one day that he does not mention where is my son. Traveling to Romania in those days was dangerous and difficult. Marcel had to go to Cairo, then to Athens, and from Athens to Rome. Particularly Italy, where another doctor in Romania told me that such and such an address has the cure for your father. Who could stop me? After I already told you people that my father was exceptional. Unlimited love. From Rome, Marcel had to travel to Czechoslovakia, and from there, he had to find a way to sneak in to Romania. My love to my father was so immense that I, I said, I don't care if I'm killed. I go back to see my father. But when Marcel finally made it home, he immediately realized that there was no hope and soon returned to Palestine. And I got after three months a terrible letter that my father passed away. And it was a big tragedy, personal, the worst I ever had before. And that's my story. Piatra, piatra de piatra, sha de jumatate napa. O calca calusi grapa inima mea multe rapta. The 15th of May, I was in Tel Aviv and I heard the declaration of the state. I was out of my mind. I said, it's not possible, but I am lucky to be in Tel Aviv. And to hear it. At that time, Marcel was already a soldier in the Haganah, and as a commander of a supply unit, he participated in the conquering of Beersheba. I was on and off in the army. I left Rebefroim to look after my refected cows. I came back, and here I am, and my refet is empty. I say, what happened? He say, the army took it, killed the cows, and fed the army. 
Marcel did not receive even a penny in compensation for his loss. Through his friend Ditsu Artsy, Marcel then arranged to be sent as a Jewish agency emissary to France, where he trained young Jewish people from Morocco to come to Israel. After my shlichut to Morocco, as a matter of fact, I remained in France. I put on the scale, where am I going now? I have no apartment. I have no money. I have no work. I have no wife. And here, my few friends tell me there are there is gold in the streets of America. Why don't you go and take a little bit of gold, collect? I'm, I'm pretty enough. Eventually, Marcel filed an application to move to Canada. I went to the Canadian embassy or consulate and I wanted a visa. And they asked, what is your profession? Oh, I'm an expert in agriculture. They say, would you please take off your gloves and show me your hands. Where are your calluses? When did you do that? I said, I was a teacher. Marcel realized that he needed to take another approach. Being the strong-minded and determined person that he is, Marcel then filed another application to a different consul. And his remark I remember till today, if only what you say, you are determined, you have some money, I know you speak French. It's a good place. You will succeed in Canada. Dans les rêves de l'enfance, dans les lèvres que le maître a puni, dans la gare où commence la première aventure de la vie, dans celui qui doute. Very cold. Once in Canada, Marcel began working for a tanner named William Buschenbaum. We were selling from Quebec to Toronto uh, hides. That is a complimentary letter I got from the buyer of hides that is 60 years old. But that was not what Marcel wished for. He wanted to be independent. He met with tanners from Chicago and asked them, Tell me, do I dream I want to open a, my own little, like my father, three workers, seven workers, have a tannery. He looked at me. Without saying it, he thought that I'm crazy. Marcel continued to work for Buschenbaum. I was always thinking my <laughs> when I went to English classes to learn English, my flesh was smelling. People didn't want to stay in the class with me. Sorry to say that. Smelly, perhaps, but it was a good year for Buschenbaum, who had already made Marcel a partner. When it was time to share the profit, however, Buschenbaum gave Marcel only $5,000 a mere pittance compared with his own profit. I didn't know how to scream and, uh, uh, and cry. Having no alternative at that point, Marcel continued to work for Buschenbaum, who was actually responsible for his new name. My boss came one day and says, 
you do a magnificent work, you don't let one stone unturned, but my telephone is breaking me. It's a dollar seventy-five cents a minute, and your name is long. Starting tomorrow, you call yourself Adam. At the age of 31, Marcel was still without a wife. I go to Sylvester in Quebec, New Year's Eve. They had in Montreal a Jewish big party. I'm going to fish for a wife. A friend of my in-laws said, do I have a girl for you? <laughs> that was my wife. And she didn't want to meet me. She says, I'm busy, I'm a student, period. Her parents insisted, and we had the first view, and that was it. I say, that should be my wife. I was enchanted. On May 24, 1953, Annie Cohen and Marcel Adams wed, only six months after they first met. She became my wife, and she was not only bright and loving, but she had a, such a nice personality that I couldn't practically live without seeing her daily, call her from my office or wherever I was, and plan life together. I was lucky to have met her. I love her immensely. I believe I could not function without her. home, it's easy, it's cheap, it's at my liking. It was time for Marcel to fulfill his dream and become independent. I go to Rosh Hashunah to the synagogue and I met a broker. His name is Voloshin. And he says, I know you have a few dollars. I'm a broker of real estate. Why don't you buy, there are 72 projected apartments. I came back to my late wife, Annie, to tell her that she was very submitted to my decision. Some money I had and some money I borrowed wherever I could. That was my first building. I bought it in 1955. And I have the fr in the front a small office for my wife, myself, and a receptionist. 580 East Grand Alley. Still the same number. I was a little king in my eastern Town. Trăiască regele în pace și onor. Para la la la. The log live the king. Oh, my laptop. I have 
a two page in the telephone numbers people I want to see and it's very easy to carry around business was good in fact it was so good that one day his friend said to him Marcel je te dérange I disturb you when I heard that I jumped I said why why do you say that he said last time when I came to play ping pong you had eight telephone calls during the evening at home so I realized that the general janitor of my apartment I decided to liquidate them and to go to a different real estate I walked an hour and 20 minutes usually I walked an hour and 15 minutes my partner in walking was a little bit slow Marcel by then a respected figure and a free man was in a position to aim high he was ready to enter the high-risk field of real estate development retail Marcel purchased some land which in 1960 became La Canardière shopping center that was my first experience in a multi tenant shopping center. I invented a shopping center, the first in Quebec and the first in my career. In 1966, with two boys, Julian and Sylvan, and a girl, Linda, the family moved to its new home on Churchill, a house that Annie and Marcel designed together, and where a few years later, Leora was to be born. That is the only house I built as a home in Montreal, which became our place to be happy with in the long run. I lived here about 40 years. 40 years. Yes, I have a major regret that I was not a good father and a good grandfather and I didn't take any of the children on a Sunday afternoon let's go and get an ice cream together let's go for a walk together are you proud of your children I think it's the best children in the community they are exceptional one by one by one. Marcel continued to work hard, expanding his investments in real estate, exploring options. In 1974, he built the Lowe's Concord Hotel on a piece of land not far from the Grand Dolay. Although Montreal had become the center of Marcel's life, his biggest developments, his shopping centers, were mostly located outside of the city. His biggest project, the Galerie de Capital Mall in Quebec City, housed both an amusement park and a hockey rink. It was the largest shopping center in the region, and Marcel was determined to keep it that way. They succeeded to bring together a parcel which is really unique in the world. And here it is. It took time to build it, to rent it, to organize it, and I came here now and say I am very, very proud to have the best and the biggest shopping center in the province of Quebec. State my case, of which I'm certain. Marcel still goes into the office every day maintaining an active part in the business. Mostly, however, he dedicates himself to philanthropic activity. Together with his wife Annie, 
they established the Marcel and Annie Adams Super Center for Brain Research at Tel Aviv University. In 1999, he donated the Marcel and Annie Adams Family MRI Unit to the Jewish General Hospital. Mon cher ami, comment ça va toi? Huh? Look at that. What, what's going on here? We want to take pictures of the MRI. Oh, you want to take pictures of because the MRI? Because we make, we make our, these gentlemen... They're making a video for your little party. That's what they're doing? and is especially committed to the Adams Fellowship Program of the Israel Academy of Sciences and Humanities. I'm so happy to greet all of our friends from the Academy, especially our veteran Adams Fellows. He welcomes the new Adams Fellows, Bruchim Abayim. Along the byway the program supports approximately 40 promising Israeli doctoral students in the sciences every year. The first thing I want to say about it is the most important thing, and it's the financial advantage of being a Milgait Adams that allowed me to make a doctorate. But along with that, I think that the advantage of this project is a lot more than just the financial advantage, the financial advantage, but the advantage is more than just the financial advantage. The financial advantage is המסגרת של התוכנית הזאת, המפגשים האלה, המפגשים החצי שנתיים, וגם התחושה שהמלגאים ממשיכים להיות מלווים בעצם לאורך כל הדרך על ידי הצוות ועל ידי מר אדמס. ואני רוצה להודות למר אדמס ולצוות כולו, בשמי ובשם כל שאר המלגאים, גם על התמיכה המאפשרת לאורך כל הדוקטורט, אבל גם על האופן שבו הדברים בעצם מתבצעים, על, על החום האנושי ועל הנימה האישית. המון המון תודה. And did it my way. I am so happy to see you, my dear ones. My advice to you is to follow and to learn that how important it is to acquire knowledge friendship and many punctuality and come more often and visit me because I cannot let time slip by and not see you. When you are an optimist, anything which is missing from achievement how could I, the idea is not, don't abandon, how could I make it a winner? If I win, 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 I'm happy with myself. When there was doubt, I... my fill, my share of losing, and now as to subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way Oh no Oh no, not me I did it my way For what is a man What has he got If not himself Then he has not To say the thing he truly feels And not the words Of one who kneels The record shows I took the blows And did it my way 
סליחה שניצחתי. It may displease some, but I still want to להצליח. Uh, playing soccer with him when I was still the firstborn only child and how hard he could kick the ball was you know great um, and then my next very strong memory and I have it for life now is when I was seven years old he taught me chess and chess has stayed with me and it is the foundation of all my intellectual endeavors and thinking because the planning and execution of a great chess game all came th through my father and my love of chess, my love of learning, my love of science. Dad, I want to thank you for guiding me, bringing me into this world, of course, guiding me, giving me opportunity. Um, today I gave a lecture uh, at uh, Israeli Academy of Sciences and it was all in your honor and I hope in 10 years when you turn 100, I have another lecture to give also in your honor. So happy birthday, Dad. I love you. Be well. Admea Vestrim. My father's a fantastic ping pong player. And we used to play ping pong in the basement um, a couple of times a week. And uh, my father was a very good ping pong player. But as I grew older, my reflexes were a little bit faster. He was a little bit older, and at some point, I was the better player. And so we would start, and uh, we'd play the game, and of course, you, you volley for serve to see who goes first, and I would start, and the game would be 3-1 for me, 5-1, 8-1, 9-3, 11-2, 11-4, uh, you play, you play ping pong till 21. And at some point when I was up by a good amount and just far enough from the end, my father would start to laugh. And I was a kid, huh? I was maybe 14 or 15, and he would start to laugh. And inevitably, he would take the next 16 or 17 points and I would lose every single game. So, he, he assured me that the laughing was not mocking, but, but the fact is he, he was having fun watching his son so intently attempting to be, defeat the father for the first time and he couldn't help himself and inevitably he won the game. So that's my memory of my father. Uh, Marcel, happy birthday, happy 90th birthday. We told you we're, we have a big celebration in, in August at our home. As you know, we, we had the, your, your uh, 80th and your 85th, and we, uh, we told you five years ago that when you reach 90, we're going to do it all over again. So give us the guest list, and we'll see you in August. Bye-bye. Dad, we had a wonderful day with you today, walking down your personal history with our children. A very, very special day as you passed on your memories, as you enjoyed your memories, uh, and we got to see them with you in Atlit and here in Pardes Khana. We've had a wonderful, wonderful day with you. It reminds me of our, of our walks that we used to take together when I was still in Montreal and I was studying as a law student and we'd go walking in the morning. We'd talk about everything, about family matters, about law, about your work, and about philosophy and life in general. And I have very, very fond memories and I'm glad to still be doing that with you, taking these wonderful walks now with my own children. I want to leave you with a blessing. You've raised an empire. You've raised four wonderful children, each of us different in our own way. And really, you've had a wonderful life. And we wish for you Admea Ve'esrim Ke'esrim. And we're very, very happy to have you for long, long visits here in Israel, whenever you can come. We're here in Israel. He's giving scholarships because he prizes 
knowledge and learning over any other thing. And he's instilled in me a love of books and a love of curiosity and travel. He always wants to know more about any subject and other perspectives. And this is great um, to always be open to new ideas. And for this, I, it was a gift to me. So dad, I hope you live another 90 years with us, full of health, full of curiosity, walking on the mountain, playing cards and sheish beish with me. And I love you and I love you. This is my story. <laughs>